Welcome back to the channel and today is Friday, July 9th, uh, 3.30 ish and I was uh, thinking about this, you know, recording earlier and um, so I was thinking about the team and you know, what, what do we have on paper and what will propel us to be a better team offensively and um, there was a hire that happened and as soon as it happened, I immediately thought how much better our offense is going to be because we can actually have guys to get open. This hire by now, you know, is Keith uh, Dub Williams. And so what I want to do today is talk a little bit about him. And, you know, I'm really just going to read off his his um, his bio that's off the Raven site. But I want to give you my perspective on because I was following him before he was hired by the Ravens. Uh, I took a lot of stuff that he did or uh, was was doing. Whether I found it on clinic tape or on YouTube or on uh, Twitter, a lot of stuff that I did in coaching receivers for the long time that I did, you know, I incorporated a lot of his stuff because it made sense. He explained it and it just it was it you you could relate to how he said it. The kids could relate to it. And he broke it down to a level where because in this day and age, kids ask why, you know, People that's my age and, and around my age, when coach said do whatever, you just did it or you attempted to do it. These kids need to know why in order for them to, to go do it. And he, he broke it down well enough to make it seem like everybody was an infant and could still do what he was doing. But, you know, let's let's get into the, the bio. You see it on there. Uh, personal information. He's a California native from Stockton, California. Uh, he's married, has what, one... Like he has one, two. He has two. He has two kids. Uh, his daughter, who he tweets a lot about, uh, plays soccer. He tweets about her all the time and going to soccer games and chilling. But as far as him, his college, he played at San Diego State, which is the school Marshall Falk went through. Went to rather. Um, 1991 Freedom Bowl team. He was also a member of the San Diego State uh, track team. Finished with a bronze at the WAC Outdoor Championship and two what's that? 100 meter time with 10 three. So the, so he could run as a player. He could run. But let's get to the college. I mean, to the coaching part. Ah, uh, where is it? Let me slide up. Started his coaching career at Solano College. Uh, never heard of Solano College. It must be a small college. It says in Northern California. But in 2001, 2004, he joined the staff at San Jose. I'm, a, I'm assuming that's San Jose. Yeah, but San Jose. And um, coach receivers for four years. Under Williams' leadership, the Spartans receivers ranked among SJSU's all-time leaders in receiving yards. So that's notch one. Let me give me a little something to write down. That's notch one. That's a positive. When you start off as a coach, you want the, the, the position to be in a better group when you leave than when you got there. And that's that, that happened right there just by saying that. Let's go on to 2011. So... No, not 2011. His next job, which is 2005, 2008, he went from San Jose State to San Jose City College. I don't know why he went. To me, he kind of went backward. Oh, he went to offensive coordinator. That's what it was. He went from wide receiver coach to the offensive coordinator, and so that's why he kind of went down in in uh in level, so to speak. Uh, San Diego, San Jose City College. He was offensive coordinator, coach wide receivers for four years. So that's kind of why you go from a D1 school down a lot, so you can be an offensive coordinator. Because, you know, personal reasons, I went from a receivers coach at a, a bigger high school to the offensive coordinator at a smaller school. So and that's kind of how the, the job goes. Uh, 2009, 2011, back to D1. Coach receivers at Fresno State. Got the three of his wideouts to all WAC honors, including first team choice Jalen Saunders, 2011. Bulldogs made two bowl appearances in Williams' three seasons there. All right, so that's another notch. Got back to just left the offensive coordinating stuff alone. Got back just to coaching receivers and took a, a I'm going to say an unknown school, but like a, a obscure type school and made somebody stand out which had, with, the, with that being Jalen Sanders. All right. Now he moves to my neck of the woods, Tulane. That's in New Orleans. Uh, he's been three seasons as Tulane's receivers coach, helping develop Greenway or Whitehouse, who has a unit. Combined for more than 150 receptions, close to 1,900 yards and 18 TDs in 2013. 
Among them, Ryan Grant, a two-time first-team All-Conference USA receiver who proceeded to play five seasons in the NFL after being selected by Washington in the fifth round of 2014. So, from Tulane, there's not a, guy, a lot of guys in the league from Tulane. And the fact that he had a receiver to come in and have five good years, well, not five good years, five years in the league, that's building that resume, building that resume. So, it would be around this time, 2012-2014, I started seeing his videos or stuff, seeing him at clinics and stuff like that and start listening to him and start picking up on some of the stuff he did with his guys and start incorporating it with the kids I coach. Let's go on. 2015-2017 is when I really dove in with Doug because he was at Nebraska. A lot of his practice stuff came out while he was at Nebraska. And, you know, like I said, I was introduced to him not him personally, but his work while he was at Tulane. And when he was at Nebraska, man, I was like a kid in a candy store. Anything I could see that he would do, I would write it down and see how I can incorporate it into what we did or, or drill we had or just teaching something. And, and his tenure with Nebraska made me a believer in what he can do as a, a route running technician. And a receiver coach. As a route running technician and receiver coach. Now, I don't know how well he is at X and O's. I I just don't know. And so far, we only seen one stint as a offensive coordinator, and that was at San Jose City College. So, as far as offensive coordinator, that might not be his forte. But as a straight receiver coach at Nebraska, when I realized this cat is that deal. Now, let's see what he, and the mentor and the corn huskers wide receivers under new head coach Mike Riley. Under Williams' leadership, Nebraska wideouts flourished. With a group combining of more than 200 receptions and nearly 2,800 yards and 23 TDs, Nebraska ranked in the top three in the Big Ten in passing offense, scoring offense, total touchdown, no, sorry, total offense, and third down conversions. That's a lot. That's a lot. We all know Nebraska has been known to be uh, like a option team, and for him to come in there and put up numbers like that with the receivers, that that's a huge statement. It, and I haven't even seen the rest of this. I'm going to say that his job, his tenure at Nebraska, and the fact that he was only there three years is not a reflection on him as a coach. It's a reflection on, like, maybe the entire program as far as not getting wins. But for to take a team that has been a primarily dive, uh, book sweep, uh, dive option, uh, some kind of option type team for, for forever. Tommy Frazier and all those guys, they dive option, um, midline is what I was trying to think of, all that type of stuff. For them, for the receivers at Nebraska to put numbers like that, that, that's huge. And that's huge. And that's when I realized that, well, to me, this cat know what he's talking about. Let's go on. Additional coaching highlights. Williams also served as the wide receiver coach for the San Antonio Commanders of the Alliance of American, what's that, AA football in 2019. His only other NFL experience, Williams spent 2008 season with the San Diego Chargers in a minority interim coaching position, internship coaching position. So, really, this, technically, this is his, let me make sure before I say this. This is his first NFL job, like for real, other than that intern. Uh, Keith Williams joined the Ravens in 2021, which we all know as a passing game specialist. He works closely. Hold on. Let me stop right there before I read that. So from 2017-2018 season, no, no job nowhere. A lot of his personal stuff started coming out. That's when he started working with probably the names that I'm going to read off in a minute. Um, and after 2019, they only played a half a season in that, that American football thing or whatever. So from 2019 until now, he really developed a one-on-one -on -one relationship with some of the top names that's, that I can kind of glance and see in this um, this next paragraph. Keith Williams joined the Ravens in 2021 as a as the pass the team's pass specialist. I'm sorry, pass game specialist. Uh, he worked closely with wide receivers coach T. Martin and mentoring the Ravens receivers. Williams has an extensive experience. Coaching wide receivers at a group he's guided for 18 years at the collegiate level, including with Nebraska from 15 to 17. More recently, he has worked to, to so I worked as a personal wide receiver coach for a number of top NFL wideouts, including Tyreek Hill, Devontae Adams, and current Raven Sammy Watkins. So he already had a rapport with Sammy Watkins. I don't know if having Williams in helped get Sammy Watkins. I think Williams was hired before we got Sammy, I think. But I don't know if that kind of helped it out. But the fact that 
he works with Devontae Adams. Devontae probably can vouch for what he does because we all know Devontae top two in the league and might not be number two, honestly. Then Tyreek Hill top five also. Um, you know, Sammy had you know a few injury history, but Sammy's still a, a good receiver too. So the numbers and the production that Tyreek and Devontae put up, which they probably vouch for for Keith, you know, because they work with him personally. And I've never met him, but I follow I've definitely followed his work from like 2014, especially that time in Nebraska. I was all over it. And when we hired this guy, I told somebody that he, he he's going to change the way our receivers perform. Now, I don't know how much he'll be involved X and O wise, but as far as teaching the nuance of route running, hold on, let me give you this. Hold on. All right. Teaching the nuance of route running. I don't think there's a, a a better guy out there that can, you know, foot placement, um, sh- a shoulder turn, head snap, uh, body composition, uh, release, um, movements at the top of routes, um, leverage, all the different things that can go into, you know, being a technician at receiver. I don't think there's a better guy out there that can teach it. Teach it. And he and, I, and again, no knock. I don't know what he can do X and O wise, but he he had a one coordinator position and didn't really flourish at it. But every time he's been the wide receiver coach, the receivers went up. The receivers then went up. So the hiring of Keith Dub Williams to me was a, a home run. Like that might have been the best offseason move we had. Might have been. I want to say it was, but I'm gonna let it play out. I'm gonna let it. I'm gonna let it. I'm gonna let it play out, and I may remember to come back to this. You know, mid season when the season over with, we'll see. We'll see. It depends on what the numbers look like because T is the receiver coach, and I think he has more. And you see him on the Ravens thing, you know, giving his little pointers and whatnot. And you don't see a lot of Dub giving his pointers because a lot of the work Dub's going to do is going to be after practice. Before practice, when guys say, hey, Doug, you know, give me a little one-on-one time afterwards. Or will you stay with me and help, on, help me with X, Y, Z. And quiet as this kept. Because I believe so much in what Dub can do. I believe Boykin would be a factor in our season this year. And I'm going to end it with that. With the, with the, with the, with the, with the,